When the women of Pennsylvania do well, their families do well, their children thrive. That's reason enough for Pennsylvania to start climbing up from the bottom rungs of the 50 states. But there's an even better reason. Pennsylvania women deserve a fair shot at a good life. They deserve a state where they're treated equally at home, at work, and at school. They deserve a seat in the boardroom and at the table of government. They deserve a chance to live and work safely, with dignity, including when they're pregnant or raising a family. They deserve the basic economic security essential to getting and staying healthy. They deserve to have their families respected and their diversity of identity and belief honored. Despite 50 years of advances, deeply embedded cultural biases and stereotypes continue to impede women's equal participation in society. When I began at the University of Pittsburgh, I had requested spousal benefits for my wife, and I was denied those, even though we are legally married in Washington, D.C. The usual approach to women's health in the state legislature, at least for the time I've been there, has been a kind of a cynical play uh, to talk about women's health, but really what they're looking to do is restrict women's uh, reproductive choices. Many more women are in the workforce these days. They may very well be the sole provider. There are many employers who do not recognize that they need to make accommodations for women who are pregnant or are nursing in the workplace. Now you have someone who, who's not just carrying a normal pregnancy, but now has become at risk for premature labor, premature delivery. The decision then is, do I need to stop work in order to preserve this pregnancy? Those decisions can be um, very painful. I was really disappointed with um, Allegheny County. I felt that I certainly couldn't have been the first nursing mother that had to report for jury duty. And at lunch, I went back to pump. There was no tables or anything for me to put my equipment on, so I had to put stuff on the vanity, on the back of the toilet. It just wasn't very sanitary. Women in this state uh, are discriminated against uh, in the workplace because they don't receive equal pay. Uh, that's a women's health issue, quite frankly. If somebody's only getting 75 cents of what a man is making to buy health care for themselves and their family, uh, we need to address that issue. The Women's Law Project is a nonprofit women's legal advocacy organization. One of just a few women's law centers in the United States and the only such organization in Pennsylvania. We've been around for 40 years now, uh, helping women overcome sex discrimination and all of our services are free. They are an organization which is out front with regards to their stated goals, and their goals are magnanimous. The Women's Law Project prides itself on being only a phone call or click away for women in need. I didn't have any place else to go. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, and I was so frustrated with the bureaucracy I was dealing with. I felt violated, and I felt that if I was violated, that other people would feel the same. My hope is to someday not need the Women's Law Project, but right now, we need folks like them to fight for the individuals. In addition to working with individuals, the Women's Law Project partners with organizations in pursuit of women's rights. New Voices Pittsburgh is a community-based organization focused on the health and well-being of black women and girls in the greater Pittsburgh region. New Voices Pittsburgh and Women's Law Project have worked together on a variety of issues from buffer zone laws to uh, the incarceration and shackling of pregnant women to now the uh, Pennsylvania Agenda for Women's Health. The Pennsylvania Agenda for Women's Health is a bipartisan package of proposed legislation in the State House and Senate that seeks to improve women's lives and health by strengthening Pennsylvania's laws. The agenda covers reproductive health, women's economic security, and women's safety. A number of us formed the Women's Health Caucus in the Pennsylvania House and Senate, working together with advocates like the Women's Law Project uh, to come up with a, a positive agenda for Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Agenda for Women's Health will protect pregnant women in the workplace, make it easier for nursing mothers to go back to work and keep nursing, protect women's health centers from obstructive protests, 
close the loopholes in our equal pay laws and protect domestic violence victims when they call the police for help. It's been refreshing to have allies like the Women's Law Project at the table formulating public policy with the Women's Health Caucus. It's been an essential element to bring their expertise to this group of legislators. It's fighting for and taking a specific interest in the plight of women's health care. The courageous women at work at the Women's Law Project are an inspiration to me and to the women we serve in New Voices Pittsburgh. Sarah has been a bright light and a bright addition to the staff. Tara is constantly in the trenches working to ensure that women can not only have access to their rights, but to be able to exercise their rights as well. What I can say about Sue Fritchie is that I love her. She is a mentor to me. When enough individuals are winning, then maybe we'll actually make some institutional or policy changes. But without the Women's Law Project, it just wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't be happening. I raise an issue and I'm not just going to help, you know, the girl down the street in Allegheny County, but I could possibly help women across the state. It's been a, a great collaboration uh, between elected officials and an advocacy group like the Women's Law Project and others uh, that have made uh, this uh, effort uh, to come to fruition, and we look forward to its success with their help. The Women's Law Project, 40 years of working on behalf of the women of Pennsylvania.